in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. One of our most thoughtful theologians of this century, in his life of St. Seraphim, said words which we should remember and which should lead us to a new understanding of our attitude to holiness and to Saint Seraphim in particular. He said, the, the holiness of Saint Seraphim inspires me with terror. And when I asked him what he meant, he said, have you ever thought that most other saints appear to us as ordinary human beings of equality or the spiritual greatness which we do not possess? But Saint Seraphim revealed himself to Matavilov in the glory of God himself. He shone before Matavilov in his conversation with him with the light of God. And it is before this light of God, even if we do not see him now, that we can, we should, bow down in spiritual awe because he has made visible to us what is there in all saints but hidden, protecting us from more than we can bear. He revealed it to one who could. And indeed, when Matavilov asked him, Matavilov shut his eyes in terror because of what he saw. Saint Seraphim said to him, Why are you shutting your eyes? Why are you recoiling? He said, I cannot look at you. The shining of your face is such that I cannot endure it. And Saint Seraphim said to him, You could not see my face as you do if your face was not shining with the same light. Isn't that something which teaches us two things? The one is that God allows the the shining of his divine presence to be partly hidden from us in the saints. We see it revealed in their lives, in their actions, in their teaching, in the shining of their eyes, but not in this terrifying manner. But it also teaches us that we can contemplate this divine shining and not be destroyed, provided we bow down, bow down and adore. And this applies to saints, of course, and to sinners, but it applies to a strange manner to all our human relationships. Because invisibly, because we have received the grace of the Holy Spirit, because in the communion we have become one with the body of Christ, we, could, we should be able to see in each other the divine presence and treat each other accordingly. God's presence, hidden in a human flesh, hidden in a human person. And what appears to us superficially to be the negative sides in a person, his sinfulness, 
his weakness, his imperfection, are not both, are, but a veil between us and the divine presence in each of us. Let us try to learn to look at one another, remembering that what we see is something superficial. It is something that hides from us, something so great that we are not capable or worthy of contemplating it. And remember, understand perhaps in you the words of one of the ancient desert dwellings. He who has seen his brother has seen his God. Yes, God's presence through the incarnation of Christ extending to us, God's presence through the gift of the Holy Spirit filling each of us on the day of our baptism and unction. God present in us because he is our Father in spite of our being frail and unworthy sons and daughters. Let us remember this and learn from it to, te to treat one another with veneration, with respect, with awe. Amen.